In this video, I will briefly introduce the technique of uh, fluorescence lifetime imaging microscopy with some of its very useful and common applications. Since it is a fluorescence based technique, therefore we will start with the concept of fluorescence. When a fluorophore or complex of fluorophores absorbs a light of appropriate energy, it reaches the excited state. A molecule in the excited state can relax via several competing non-radiative and radiative pathways. Fluorescence is a radiative relaxation pathway in which an excited state molecule relaxes to the ground state and in the process emits photon of lower energy than the absorbed photons. This shift in the energy of the absorbed and emitted photons is known as Stokes shift. In addition to the intensity in a certain spectral range, fluorescence has several other characteristic parameters which are position, polarization and fluorescence lifetime. Fluorescence lifetime is an internal property of the molecule and has a unique value for each fluorophore. In fact, two fluorophores having an overlapping or ill-defined emission spectra can still be distinguished based upon their unique lifetimes. It represents an average length of time a fluorophore spends in excited state before returning to the ground state. Fluorescence lifetime can be calculated from the decay profile of the fluorescence as shown in this figure. It is a measure of time in which the fluorescence intensity becomes reduced by the factor E. These two characteristics of the fluorescence, that is the fluorescence intensity and fluorescence lifetime, are often used to image the specimen. In conventional fluorescence microscopy, the emission intensity of a specimen is integrated over time to create an intensity-based image of the sample. The spectral emission filters are used to separate the weaker emitted light from the much stronger illumination light. In the fluorescence lifetime, Imaging method, instead of recording the emission intensity, the decay of the fluorescence across the specimen is recorded and used to construct the image. The fluorescence intensity and fluorescence lifetime imaging, they also can be combined and they are even useful to, it is also useful to combine them basically. Conventional fluorescence microscopy, which uses fluorescence intensity to create image of the specimen, is a powerful technique to study the properties of organic and inorganic substances. It is particularly useful to study the biological processes at the cellular and subcellular level in real time. However, there are a number of factors as nicely summed up in this reference figure, which makes the analysis of the fluorescence data from biological samples very complicated. For instance, when the excitation and emission filters are not very selective, it becomes difficult to separate the contribution from the compounds which have overlapping emission spectra. Reduced fluorescence contrast in the microscopic image of the biological samples due to the light scattering and reabsorption within the specimen is a common problem as well. Biological samples are often needed to be measured from several seconds up to several minutes. However, for such a long exposure times, the, the bleaching of the fluorescence is also a very common problem. Inhomogeneous probe concentrations in the specimen can also induce the variations in fluorescence intensity from the specimen. Most of these shortcomings can be relatively easily overcome by using the fluorescence lifetime to construct the image of the specimen. Because fluorescence lifetime is an internal property of the fluorophore and is very less susceptible to the factors such as excitation wavelength, light scattering, reabsorption, inhomogeneous concentrations of probes and chromophores. In this figure, it is described how the fluorescence lifetime contrast is used to construct the image of the specimen. Consider a simple uh, case of hypothetical specimen with a grid-like structure, where each rectangular region occupies the area of one pixel. This figure in gray scale shows the fluorescence micrograph of such a hypothetical specimen. Now consider the fluorescence decay from this uh, specimen can be described with the four lifetimes which are shown with the distinct false colors in figure B. In a simple case where in each pixel only one of the four lifetimes is shown, the construction of the micrograph of the specimen using the fluorescence lifetime contrast is shown in this figure C. Fluorescence intensity and fluorescence lifetime images of the specimen can be superimposed as well as shown in figure D and as discussed in the previous slide as well. Fluorescence lifetime of a fluorophore is commonly determined using the frequency domain and time domain data acquisition techniques. Both techniques are quite different from each other in electronics and data acquisition methods. However, mathematically both techniques are equivalent and through Fourier transform, data acquired from the one technique can be converted to the other. In the frequency domain method, the intensity of the continuous wave source 
is modulated at a high frequency up till 100 MHz. Due to the intensity modulation of the excitation source, the fluorescence from the specimen is also modulated at the same frequency. However, due to the delay in the fluorescence with respect to the excitation wave, the emitted signal is phase shifted with respect to the excitation source. The intensity of the emitted signal is also demodulated as compared to the source uh, signal. In frequency domain method, the fluorescence lifetime of the fluorophore is calculated from the phase delay and the modulation depth information. In time domain method, shown on the right side, instead of continuous wave source, pulsed laser source is used. Emitted fluorescence with this method therefore also has a pulsed pattern. One commonly used method for time uh, domain technique is time correlated single photon counting method. In this method, maximum of single uh, fluorescence photon is ideally detected in one signal period. To ensure that the probability of detecting more than one photon per pulse is very low, laser pulses of low intensity and high repetition rate, typically 20 to 80 MHz, are used. The principle of TCSPC is shown on the right in this reference figure. After the application of a laser flash, when the first photon is detected, the event is recorded and saved in the memory with the address proportional to the detection time. This process is repeated several times such that the histogram of the detection time of the individual photons is built up in the memory. From the profile of this histogram, the fluorescence lifetime of the fluorophore is calculated. Fluorescence lifetime imaging can be performed with the macroscopic setup which is equipped with the pulsed or modulated laser excitation source, fast detector and suitable electronics for recording the data. An example of the fluorescence lifetime imaging microscopy application in photosynthesis is shown here. Cyanobacterium synocosystus is a model oxygenic photosynthetic organism. Two photosystems, that is photosystem 1 and photosystem 2, are embedded in the thylakoid membranes of the cell. With the laser pulses of 440 nanometer excitation, these two photosystems can be excited and the fluorescence is observed. On the left, confocal intensity image of the synocosystem cells is shown in grayscale. For the same cells, the mean fluorescence lifetime image is shown on the right. The bluish regions with the longer lifetimes shows the areas where the photosystem 2 is present. It is because the photosystem 2 has a slower excitation energy trapping kinetics as compared to the photosystem 1 and therefore has longer fluorescence lifetime. The orange regions with the smaller lifetimes show the location of the photosystem 1. Since photosystem 1 has fast excitation energy trapping kinetics, therefore fluorescence from photosystem 1 decays faster. The excited state uh, decay kinetics of a molecule are sensitive to its local environment. An energy transfer between the excited state molecule and its environment changes the fluorescence lifetime of the molecule. This way, fluorescence lifetime imaging provides information about photophysical processes which are very difficult or even impossible to observe with the fluorescence intensity imaging. Fluorescence lifetime imaging microscopy is often used to map the parameters such as ionic concentrations, pH variations, and interactions between the proteins within the cell and the conformational changes in the proteins. These are however only a few commonly used applications. In fact, this technique is widely used across various disciplines ranging from material science to forensics and to environmental sciences and many more. Thank you for watching.